and we were That's live. <laughs> um, okay, we are here. We have uh, Spider Man in our midst. Two year old Spider Man, so we may hear a lot from Spider Man tonight. We're going to study tonight on the rapture. That's what we talked about before. The only thing is, I'm going to have to rely on my notes a lot because I did this back before we missed so many weeks. But we've been between the flu and the everything, holidays, and everything going on. It's been a while. But, uh, <clears throat> so, but before we talk about the actual rapture, it's kind of uh, important to know what the tribulation is, what the, its purpose, and um, if you have a better understanding of that, then you can understand this. So the tribulation, we'll talk about that first. The tribulation is, and, uh, some of you may already know this, but is based on the a missing week in Daniel, uh, which is seven years long. <clears throat> so, uh, and I, I gave y'all a blank right off the bat. Um, there's 70 weeks prophesied in Daniel that are concerning the first and second coming of the Messiah. 70 weeks. You don't have a pen, but that's okay. Oh, now you do. <laughs> okay. Um, God reveals this to Daniel during the Israelite uh, Babylonian captivity. Um, you know, God throughout the throughout the whole Old Testament, the uh, the Israelites kept turning to false idols, false gods, and all this kind of stuff, and falling out of God's will. And He continually warned them through prophets and stuff. <laughs> Uh, that they needed to repent and turn back towards him or things were going to happen that they were going to get taken into captivity and um, so and he would he would bring uh, droughts you know different things to them to try to get their attention um, but they continually every once in a while they'd have a good king they'd, they'd kind of go back and forth they'd have a good king and the good king would kind of get everything back on track with putting worship and sacrifices and all that kind of stuff back in place. And then, um, but then they'd get somebody else who uh, worshipped idols and Baal and all that kind of stuff. And um, what are you trying to do, boy? Mama. Okay. It's Spider-Man. <clears throat> but, um, so, um, they remained unrepentant, and then finally it came time that uh, he let them be conquered by the Babylonians and led into captivity. So, um, Daniel 9.24 says, 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin, and to atone for iniquity, to bring an everlasting righteousness to seal both vision and profit and to anoint a most holy place so chapter 9 of Daniel begins with Daniel making a he's like figuring out how long his people are supposed to be in exile based on the prophecy of Jeremiah because Jeremiah uh, so he knew it was going to happen and I'll read you Jeremiah's prophecy because of Jeremiah's prophecy and he's just figuring out the timeline and uh, an interesting note is that Jeremiah was around during the time of Daniel, but probably when he was little, you know, and, uh, and, and had made all these prophecies and stuff, and uh, maybe not all the way into his adult life, but they were like on a real close timeline. <clears throat> um, and so Daniel would have been aware of his preaching and his prophecies and all that stuff. So I, th I think it's kind of cool when you uh, <clears throat> realize when some of the prophecies were around as far as the other biblical characters. So Jeremiah's prophecy, prophecy in chapter 25 says, So Jeremiah the prophet said to all the people of Judah and to all those living in Jerusalem, For 23 years, from the 30th year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until this very day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. And the, though the Lord has sent all his servants, the prophets, to you again and again, you have not listened or paid any attention. That's what I was just telling you. They said, turn now each of you from your evil ways and your evil practices, and you can stay in the land the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever and ever. 
Do not follow other gods to serve and worship them. Do not arouse my anger with what your hands have made, and then I will not harm you. But you did not listen to me, declares the Lord. And you have aroused my anger with what your hands have made, and you have brought harm to yourselves. Therefore, the Lord Almighty says this, Because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declares the Lord, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and an everlasting ruin. I will banish them from the... I don't know where we're going after... I will banish them from the sounds of joy and gladness. He wants my glasses. The voices of bride and bridegroom, the sound of millstones and the light of the lamp. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland. And these nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. So that's how long they were in captivity was 70 years. So, I mean, it's not like that they weren't told or warned. They've been warned repeatedly um, over the years. And so... Daniel prayed, and it's, he says in Daniel 9, 3, he says, Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So Daniel prayed um, repentance, you know, a, a prayer of repentance to God for the sins of Israel, for his people in Judah. And then God sends the angel, which angel? To Daniel. To deliver a message. Gabriel? Yes. <laughs> Yay! <it> was, <laughs> and that's where Daniel receives the prophecy regarding the 70 weeks. So the next blank actually is the angel Gabriel gave Daniel the message of what's called the 70 weeks of Daniel. It's a countdown to, on God's time, time clock of the ages, and it began ticking with that decree for the 70 weeks. And to restore and, and rebuild Jerusalem. The, and the decree was issued by King Cyrus. So uh, Daniel 9, 26 and 27 tells us the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Of course, the city is Jerusalem. You know, and, and he, the prince who is to come, is the Antichrist. Will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. And that one week is seven years. Um... But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate. Even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. So this is talking about the, the Antichrist. So Revelation 13 gives a more detailed description. description. Um, but we know that the beast is the Antichrist. And that God gives him the power to rule over the whole world for three and a half years. The tribulation lasts seven, but he's not put into complete power until three and a half years. And, um, and the term weeks, this is a, a blank. The term weeks refers to seven years or seven sevens. So the 70 weeks is a period that totals 490 years or 70 times seven. So confused. <laughs> I know it can be confusing all the seventies and sevens and stuff. Wait, so, so it totals what? Four hundred and ninety years. Yeah, sounds like a normal seventy weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since fifty-two weeks are in a year. Right. Anyway, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> so, but the four hundred and ninety years is not yet. completely consecutive. You know, it's, it's kind of broken up. So, uh, in Daniel 9, 24 to 27, the 490 years yeah, yeah. fall short by seven, we seven years. So, there's the 62 weeks plus seven weeks equals 43, 483 years. And then there was there were short <laughs> seven weeks. So, there's actually 69 weeks have been fulfilled. Because he also, I think I get into that. It, there's a, uh -huh. part of that time frame is because he's counting from then till actually when the Messiah will come the first time mm -hmm. and then there's the seven weeks or the or actually the final week which is seven years which is after that is when the Messiah will come the second time so that's after the tribulation 
So. So what's 490 years? That was the initial number that was given to Daniel by Gabriel. And then. <laughs> of how long it would be until the second, four, until the last week? Uh, four, yeah, actually, 490 years is the whole amount of time up until Jesus comes back. But it was from cut. the time that he died? No. From the time that they go to Jerusalem and start rebuilding Jerusalem. Because King Cyrus released, he and he was even mentioned by name, by prophets in the Old Testament, that God spoke to Cyrus and told him to let his people go. And that's what caused him to be so willing to let them go is because he was mentioned by name in the scriptures. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Anyway, so, yeah, from the, the, the 490 years is cut short by seven years, That's by all the good. things that are fulfilled, 483, yeah. So, but there's a gap between that that comes all the way up to the 70th week, which is reser reserved for end times. So, if you use the literal interpretation of the prophecy of the 70 weeks, then it begins with the declaration to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem because Cyrus was letting them return. And uh, ne Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem in 444 BC and King Cyrus sent the Jews back uh, in 538 and 539. And then this is a blank. Nehemiah led the people to reinforce the gates of the temple and to rebuild the jaws, the jaws, <laughs> the jaws that were losing them, <laughs> the walls of Jerusalem, we're losing them, <laughs> <laughs> which took 49 years and equates to the first seven year period. <laughs> Good try. We're losing them. <laughs> the jaws of we're losing them. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point forward there would be another 434 years as Israel was waiting for the coming of the Messiah and um, this would bring us until the time of Jesus when he rode into Jerusalem uh, in AD 33 so that, that part was fulfilled or that time frame was fulfilled when Jesus made his triumph in Israel <laughs> <laughs> his triumphant in entry to Israel oh my gosh um, so that fulfilled everything through that time who said bless your heart <laughs> I said words are hard <laughs> she said bless her heart but same <laughs> since I can't talk um, Daniel 9.26 says your birthday and that is 926. Hey, Daniel 926 is my birthday. Well, I mean, not Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and after the 62 weeks, keep it together. An anointed one shall be cut off. And that's talking about Jesus' crucifixion. And shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war, and desolations are decreed. So, by the time you get to the end of the 69 weeks, then Jesus has been here, he's come, and he's uh, died for our sins, which was him being cut off. And, uh, and then there's also mention of the destruction of the temple, um, and that all in 70 AD, and that completes what was to happen at that time. And then it skips all this time till the end before we get to the 70th week, the 70th and final week. And so uh, that brings us to the time of the period called uh, the tribulation. And when the Antichrist comes into the picture and uh, most everybody that I've ever heard teachings on doesn't believe that we'll actually see the Antichrist at all. That he's going to come after the rapture is when that he'll be made known. Because I guess we would know who it was, and people be like raising cane about it and stuff. But, but how would we? I mean, not necessarily. If well, he because we like know blatantly proclaim. Well, I mean, he wouldn't have to proclaim he was the Antichrist because the person that comes into the picture that is able to make some kind of peace deal with Israel that's going to make 
that everybody's satisfied and but it's already a, signed and it's a seven, <laughs> and it's a seven year deal so when we see somebody signing that a seven year flags. deal yeah a red well, flag that and the temple has to be made before the antichrist because that's where he's going to stand well it'll, it'll have to be done in the first three and a half years yeah so, yeah. so um it's crazy to around to see that i hope not i hope not too so uh it's during the 70th week that the Antichrist comes into the picture, and um, which should, the rapture will, it, it's not necessarily going to be, begin immediately after the rapture, but the rapture is going to happen first, and it's going to come soon after, and then, uh, and then that will, period will end when Jesus comes back and steps foot on the Mount of Olives and destroys all the enemies with the... With the words of his mouth. I mean, he won't even have to do anything. <clears throat> but, um, the bad people. The bad people. <laughs> During this time, the Antichrist will rise to power and there will be a period of judgment on the earth. And it will also be the time when God turns his attention towards the nation of Israel. You know, um, and then this is a blank. The seven year tribulation is also known, known, known as the time of Jacob's trouble. And we've discussed that before. I know I have with Val. Are those my cupcakes? Could be. Jacobs. <laughs> Sorry. We're having a cupcakes covered. So the dogs go now. Pause. Okay, go back inside. We ordered uh, cupcakes earlier and... <laughs> We're just now getting them delivered. And the dogs have to bark their brains out and stuff like that. Cupcakes. 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 So, as Daniel mentioned, you know, uh, it, the Antichrist will make a treaty or a covenant with Israel that'll last for seven years. And then, but at three and a half years into it, he's going to break his treaty. You know, he'll break the covenant. And then that's when he goes into the temple and proclaims himself God and all those things, you know, so. That's when he basically goes in the top. Yeah. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel 9.27 says, and this is talking about the Antichrist, he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice because, you know, they're going to rebuild the temple and they're going to reinstate uh, animal One sacrifice second. and all that stuff, you know. But then three and a half years, and he wants them to do that. And that's probably, uh, my understanding from what I've heard, is part of the peace deal <coughs> with Israel to kind of sweeten the deal for them, say, okay, we'll, uh, we'll work something out for you, you know, where you can rebuild your temple. You know, so, uh, and that'll be, you know, something that'll draw them in because they've been wanting to rebuild their temple forever. And this will finally be that opportunity. And, you know, they've been getting things ready for that already anyway. You know, they've got the red heifers and stuff over there that they, and they've got all the instruments and all the things that they need. I never to, thought of them using that as a, as a carrot. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, and at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. And, um, you know, and we've talked about how AI may have something to do with all of that. In the New Living Translation, it says the ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven. But after this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all his horrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. So, he's going to be the one in control. And, you know, we've heard that he had like a, I mean, like a statue or, you know, something, some kind of image, which may be some kind of AI thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in the temple. But... <clears throat> And he, will be the reason for the mark of the beast. Yeah, probably. Uh, the Antichrist will be somebody who has, you know, he's going to be somebody that's very chas charismatic, charismatic, and and has, uh, you know, has all the answers. That's able to bring all these people into agreement with one another, and 
and everything for an agreement for peace. You know, and who's not going to want that right now, especially? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just... It won't take a lot of convincing. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. You know, I mean, COVID kind of told us that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just feel like, you know, with everything that's been going on in the world and everything, we're just, we're ripe for all of that to happen. COVID um, is just a test of the Yeah. So there's just never been, never been a better time for him to be able to step in and do something like that. So, um, I already said that. Uh, there hasn't, the Temple Mount, until now, it's been impossible because the Temple Mount, where it has to be built is where the Palestinians built their main mosque in the 600s. You know, so, and it's been, of course, a subject of dispute and fighting over that this whole entire time. So, um, and like I said, three, three and a half years into the temple, into the temple, into the tribulation, he's going to proclaim himself God and demand that everybody worship him and, or whatever that image is that he, that he has and then that's when he's going to demand, start demanding everybody take the mark of the beast. And that's going to be where nobody can buy or sell anything or do anything without that mark. And so, you know, when that happens. So um, he's going to decree that at the time that he's <laughs> telling everybody who he is. Yeah, he's when he proclaims himself God. Mm -hmm. he yeah. No, he's going to proclaim himself God. And then he's going to demand everybody worship him. And then he's also going to demand that everybody take his mark. And then he's going to kill us all. Yeah, and the deal is, is like if you don't take his mark, for one thing, he won't have to kill everybody. Because if you can't buy food, you, you, can, die. you can't make any kind of transactions. You can't buy food, you can't work. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you won't even be able to work. No medical attention, mm -hmm. no food. Yeah. That's why trade is going to be so important. But So, yeah, and then you're probably just going to have people hunting for you. You know, and they know where you are all the time. Mm -hmm. If you've got a cell phone, they know where you are all the time. Yeah. And look Digital at even internet yeah. and like the yeah. COVID thing, where you basically had people the whole division between the masks huh? and the not mm -hmm. mask and the people. Yeah, basically doing that, turning on each other and turning each other in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like um, Jimmy Evans is somebody that you know, that I like to listen to. And he said, you know, well, during the tribulation, you're either going to starve to death or you're going to die from some of the judgments that are uh, falling on the earth or you're going to be killed, you know, be martyred. You know. so, um, so another note about the church being gone, the, the rapture happening first, and uh, Thessalonians uh, 2, or for, uh, it says, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and are being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us. This is Second Thessalonians, because people have been, uh, they had been hearing rumors and people saying that the rapture had already occurred. And so he's saying it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so he's saying, that's why he said, don't be unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, because people had been telling them that stuff and they thought that it was part of what was being taught. He said, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let any deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Of course, this is, like I said, talking about the second coming, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. What's holding him back? What's holding who back? The Antichrist. What's holding him back? The Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. The Holy Spirit yes. oh. in the church. Mm -hmm. Because... When we become Christians, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live in us. So as long as we were here, are here, then we're holding him back. But when the Holy Spirit, when the rapture happens and the Holy Spirit is removed, well, then he'll be able to come in and do his thing. So he says, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. So, and then the lawlessness, the lawless one will be revealed. So the Holy Spirit has to be removed before he can be revealed. 
that's another argument for the rapture happening before. And this continues, saying, The Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refused to love the truth and to be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Were you going to ask a question? Oh. And I yeah. kind of, I mean, you know, you have people talking about certain churches or how some of the churches are turning and becoming to where for lack of a better way to put it I guess less and less truth is being taught to where mm -hmm. things are being so well, watered down and coated, and watered down and yeah. where even the church and preachers are afraid of stepping on toes that mm -hmm. they're not well it says in Revelation that even the most, <coughs> I don't know if devout is the word, but... The elect, the, even the elect we'll start could to. be deceived. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um... <coughs> so, crazy since mm -hmm. they study exactly. all of this and know it's going to happen and to still buy into it. Yeah. It's actually scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the Holy Spirit is in the way of the Antichrist being revealed. And so the Antichrist can't do his thing until the Holy Spirit is removed and the Holy Spirit lives in us. So as long as we're here, the Holy Spirit remains. And um, but and it's not like the Holy Spirit will be gone completely because people can still be saved. But it'll be uh, more like the Holy Spirit comes on somebody rather than it just being everywhere. Yeah. Um, so... The 70th week or seven years was reserved for the end times when God will pour out his wrath on the unbelieving world, but he's going to open the eyes of his people and salvation will come to the Jews. So uh, Paul says in Romans 11, he says, I asked then, did God reject his people? Talking about Israel. By no means. I'm an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I'm the only one left and they're trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were grace, if it were, grace would no longer be grace. What then? What the people of Israel sought so earnestly, they did not obtain. Because they were seeking the Messiah. They just were looking for the wrong. They were looking for the one who's coming, not the one who came. But they missed him. So uh, only the elect of them realized it. You know, like Nicodemus and different people. There were people who realized he was the Messiah and accepted him. Um, but there were many who did not see him. So it says, as it is as it written... God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that could not see and ears that could not hear to this very day. And David says, may their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and their backs be bent forever. Again, I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles. So, because of their transgression, Paul got to be the the, uh, the apostle to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater the riches will their full inclusion bring? So eventually they will receive him. I'm talking to you Gentiles Inasmuch as I am apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole <coughs> batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off and you... 
because he's still talking about the Israelites and us as Gentiles. And you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in. We're grafted in among the others and now sharing the nourishing sap from the olive fruit. Do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he would not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they did not uh, do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. So they can still believe. And uh, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And otherwise, the times, other words, the times of the Gentiles have been fulfilled. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. And I'm, I'm reading all this just so you can kind of get the full picture. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. Jacob is Israel. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you, who were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. So they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. So God still loves them, and he's going to give them the opportunity to choose him during the tribulation. That's why I was reading all that, because they, so far their eyes are closed you know, because of their rejection of him and everything, that he's going to give them that <coughs> opportunity during the uh, tribulation. Because remember, there's going to be 144,000 uh, Jewish men who are going to be preaching the gospel everywhere. Um, they'll be going boldly throughout the world. Um, and like I said, the time of Jacob's trouble, when I said that, comes from Jeremiah 37. And um, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he will be saved out of it. So remember that uh, this is a, a, a blank. Remember that God changed Jacob's name. What did He change Jacob's name to? Israel. To mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. He changed his name to Israel. So when God says the time of Jacob's trouble, He really means the time of Israel's trouble, which is what the tribulation is going to be. So verse five describes Jacob's trouble as a great time of fear and trembling. Verse six describes it in. Uh, pains of childbirth and indicating a time of agony but there's hope for Israel because God promises he will save them so even though it's the time of his trouble and uh, and there's never and it says there has never been such a time of terror uh, it says that in Jeremiah 37 Yay. yeah well Sounds we won't great. we won't be here hopefully <laughs> but uh, however only a remnant even of Israel is going to survive you know during this um, this also relates to the times of the Gentiles ending. We talked about that before. The church age will be over due to the rapture. And, um, and then it'll be the time of Israel's trouble. And, um, and in Revelation, this is just another, not really an argument for it, but in Revelation, when, uh, John is being shown all these things in the first, uh, three chapters of Revelation, uh, Jesus has the letters to the churches, you know, all this kind of stuff, talking about the church, the church, the church. And then after chapter 3, when he says, come up here and I'll show you the things that must come to pass, or whatever, after he says, come up here, he never mentions the church again. So, uh, so the church comes up here, and then the rest of the things are what happens during the tribulation to the remainder of people on the earth. So... 
uh, and then the chapter four in Revelation starts with, after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. And at once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. So he's in heaven from there. And um, also you get the trumpet sounding, uh, which what says when the rapture happens, the trumpet's going to sound. And uh, so this should all be happening before the tribulation. So uh, the Jews rejected Jesus, so salvation was brought to the Gentiles. And, um, and then before the 70th week, the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled and the church is removed and taken to heaven. And then God's focus is going to be on Israel's trouble. And um, I already said this, but their eyes, that's when they will have that chance to receive him. But it's also going to be a time that they're going to have to face his wrath, or the whole world is. And um, this will be their time because the church will be gone. And then God told Israel, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice and love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. You know, they're, they were called the apple of God's eye. I mean, he loves Israel. They're his, his people, but, you know... He, they're just having to suffer because of their rejection of him. They rejected him and did not receive him, and so they will go through the tribulation. And, you know, how many people didn't get a second chance, but they're going to. Um, three and a half years, this is a blank, three and a half years into the tribulation, Satan will finally get to do what he has always wanted to do since the beginning of time, make everyone worship him as God. You know, he's wanted that since before he was kicked out of heaven. You know, he's uh, <coughs> he's always wanted to be God. You know, wanted to take that place. And now he'll get to pretend anyway and take control of the situation. So, you know, and if you take the mark, you know, he's going to try to make everybody take his mark. And if you take the mark, then there's no turning back. You can't change your mind. It's a, you know. That sucks. Yeah, it's an acknowledgement. I mean, you're receiving it. You're accepting it, and once you accept it, it's so a done deal. Their mind, but they're also deceived. You know, uh, they're falling for the lie. That's what needs to be said about the lie thing. Is yeah, so, yeah, they don't know. Yeah. But then they can't even change their mind. Mm -hmm. But they'll be so deceived they won't want to. They won't. I mean, whoever receives it is already going to be in the position that they're not going to change their mind. But, um... The, they will be given over to the delusion, like that, you know, you? to the lie. So, um, and, and then if you don't take it, then, you know, when you receive Jesus, you're guaranteed eternity. Um, but you're probably going to die. <laughs> There's not going to be too many people left, probably, that, uh, that accepted him and that are still around. So, you definitely do not want to miss that boat. Um, and like I said before, if you've never met Jesus, now would be a good time <coughs> to get to know him. Um, and then the seven-year tribulation, this is a blank too, the seven-year tribulation will end with the return of Jesus at the second coming. Wow. And then when he returns, he will immediately judge the Antichrist. And after that, he will establish his millennial. <laughs> In English, that's millennial <laughs> reign on the earth, and um, and then of course once he's here and we have that, he will bring an everlasting righteousness and anoint a most holy place, and uh, and this will complete the seven year tribulation. You know when he comes back. So at this moment, we sit somewhere between the end of the 69th week and the 70th week. <laughs> So, and like we were talking about, I mean, there's so much going on, you know, that, uh, I mean, it's just ripe. And I, I have a note. There are a lot of Christians who are confused about the rapture versus the second coming. Um, does it make sense to you, though, what I've been telling you? So, you know, and it's also, uh, you know, there will be the Battle of Armageddon and all this stuff. And we, But we're his bride, you know, we accepted him and chose him already. So he's not going to make us face 
all this wrath and you know all these things because uh, Jimmy Evans said who'd want to marry a guy like that <laughs> divorce <laughs> yeah. you know he said he's not mad at you <laughs> you know it's the unbelieving world that refused him and all that that's going to be going through that and even then they're going to get a second chance to choose him so um, let's see And then also it says that he will come like a thief in the night. You know, when, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor planes, planes on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like the others who, who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God, this is a scripture that I've told you before, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. So he didn't appoint us to wrath. You know, we chose him. And then Revelation 3.10 says, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. So he's saying he will keep us from that. <laughs> and then uh, Daniel 12.1 says, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise, and there will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people... Everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. So, to me, I mean, there are some people who disagree with that, you know, and think that the rapture is not going to happen, you know, and that we're going to all go through the tribulation. But all these things make me believe different. And then Jesus said in Luke twenty-one twenty-eight, When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your, redre your redemption is drawing near. So, when all this crazy stuff is going on, and we can see, uh, and like right now, all eyes are on Israel. You know, they're surrounded. I mean, the whole world is, uh, you know, it reminds me of the wars and rumors of wars. Oh, my gosh, you know. And, uh, I mean, they're just all sides, and everybody's turning against them. And even the United States is, like, pressuring them and trying to get them to get out of Gaza. You know, all these things are going on. And... Uh, so, it's just a crazy time we're in. And it's hard to think that things are going to get worse for them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. And uh, 1 Thessalonians four sixteen to 18 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, the trumpet, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. So it's not him coming down here it's us going to down. putting his foot, foot on the Mount of Olives and defeating the Antichrist and all that. It is us joining him in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these thoughts. And then, uh, listen, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we all will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. But the trumpet will sound. Dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Um, and this is talking about the day and the hour that we don't know. Matthew twenty four thirty six through 44 says, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And so, and like uh, Jimmy Evans was saying, can you imagine at the end of the tribulation that life is going on like normal? You know, that uh, 
people are getting married and giving away in marriage and buying and selling. Everything is like normal after all this destruction has been going on in the earth. And uh, everybody's having to take the mark of the beast. And I mean, you know, the world is going to be like chaotic crazy. So it's not going to be like normal business as usual, you know, during that time. It's going to be chaos. And people like struggling just to stay alive, you know, stuff. So that's another thing, you know. It's not going to be like that. And then it says two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the hand mill and one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. And then also uh, Luke 21, 36 says, be always on the watch. And pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. So, you know, there's all these scriptures saying we're not appointed to wrath. And to and pray and to escape the things that are going to be happening. And all that kind of stuff. So all of those things point to us not being here during that time. And then... Um, after these things I looked and behold this is what I read to you all ago a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me saying come up here and I will show you the things that must take place after that so uh, the rapture occurs in, Feb in, Re in February in Revelation 4 1 is John hears a voice like a trumpet oh I guess that's a it's a block mm -hmm. yeah. what is it? And you have to remember, too, that the rapture is connected with the trumpets. It says when the trumpet sounds and, and all this and at the last trumpet. And and then after the tribulation, the church is, is presented in Revelation 19 as the wife of Jesus. You know, instead of us being the bride of Christ and all this kind of stuff, we're going to be his wife. At the end. So we've been up there for the wedding uh, service. <laughs> what about men? Well, if Jesus, if we're the bride of Christ, even men are the bride of Christ. It's symbolic. Um, and, you know, it's... <laughs> And we'll be up there for that seven years. And it's also, you know, like I, I probably talked about before, yeah. but in the Jewish tradition and stuff is that uh, the man and woman will become betrothed. And they sign a contract and everything then to be married. And it's such a binding thing that if they change their minds and don't actually go through with everything, they have to get an actual divorce certificate. You know, but... Uh, the husband, they do the betrothal thing, and then he goes off to back to his father's house, and he goes and prepares everything for his bride, he gets it all ready, and then he comes back at a time, he surprises her, he doesn't, she they doesn't don't have a set time of when he's going to nice, come get her, nice. so she has to be ready all the time, because he could appear at any time to get her. And then he gets her, and then they go back, and they get married, and they have a seven-day, the wedding the feast and the wedding, everything all lasts for seven days. So that's representative of the seven years that we'll be in heaven with him during the tribulation down here. So we'll be up there celebrating, having a wedding celebration and all that as the bride of Christ while they're going through hell <laughs> on earth down here. But anyway... And then he says, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So, uh, all the Jews would recognize all these references because of what their traditions were, and it would all make sense to them. So, and I, oh, I gave you a blank for this, even though I already told you, but it says the bridegroom would leave his father's house proceed to the bride's, bride's house <gasps> bride's house pay the bride's price and then return home to prepare a dwelling place known as a huppa h-u-p-p-a for him and his bride then the father when the father told the groom it was time 
So the, only the father knew. The father was the one who told him the time. Then he went to receive his bride and bring her home for the wedding. So the teaching was clear from all of that that the rapture happens at the beginning. So I believe that we will be the raptured church and that we'll be in heaven during all the stuff that goes on on the earth during the seven years. Does that all make sense? Except the kind of confusion over the 70 weeks. <laughs> right. That may still not have jilted. What's, what's seven times 70 weeks? How long is 490 years. 490. Years. 490. If, if you did the math, it would all come up. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, I guess that's it. And we'll just pray. And, um, no, it would be 490 and they're still trying to figure it out. Here, well, let's pray and y'all can figure out the 490 years. <laughs> no, it's just weeks represent the years. I mean, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> the more I try to explain it, the more confused I get for myself. It's confusing. Okay, well, let's... Uh, pray lord we just thank you for this time that we had together tonight to study your word and uh, about you and about your coming lord we look forward to that the bible says for us to watch and to wait and god we're so ready and we just pray for our loved ones that don't know you yet god that you would open their eyes and that you would draw them into relationship with you because we don't want anyone to be left behind and to have to face what's to come we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we'll see you next time.